appreciate the choir singing for us tonight. Thank you for being here. We're glad to have some visitors with us. We're excited about tonight. Tomorrow night, Pastor Owens will be preaching for us. And uh, glad that he could kick off our year. Amen. And uh, get us excited about this coming year. Got a lot of things to do. And uh, we got a lot of things to do before Jesus comes. Amen. And uh, glad that you're here tonight. Let's pray. Ask the Lord to help us in our service. Father, thank you for the day. You've been mighty good to us. Lord, we, we can thank you uh, all evening long for all the blessings that you've given us. Lord, I pray that tonight that you would bless the choir and the special music. I pray that you'd use Brother Owens as he'll preach the word of God. May our hearts be stirred. May we be convicted. May we be strengthened, Lord. May we become better servants and better Christians from the preaching of the word of God. Father, please bless this service and tomorrow night we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Good to see everyone tonight. 113 in your hymn books, please. 113. Everyone stand in the cannon will. Glory to his name. Give the Lord your best in song now. Down at the cross where my Savior. so much. You can be seated. All right. Let me just give you a couple of folks to remember in prayer. Uh, Miss Margaret Miller is not feeling well tonight. If you would pray for her. Of course, Miss Jane Morgan still in the hospital. If you would continue to pray for her. Been through two or three different surgeries. And so, uh, but then if you also would remember Steve Deemer, this is Margaret's son-in-law had surgery today. And so pray for him as he's recovering from that. And so, uh, of course, we have many on our prayer list. I'll not go through all those tonight, but do remember those if you would, please. And then, of course, uh, j- for announcement's sake, of course, uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, we'll be back here for the service and uh, invite somebody. Let them know uh, that we're having service. We, we put it on our Facebook page and uh, let folks know about that. And so thank you to those who are visiting with us. We have a, a lady from Brother Ron Young's church. They're Morningstar. Glad to have her. Good to see Paul Souter and his wife back there. Good to see y'all. Thank y'all for being with us tonight. And uh, let me say this. Of course, when you come in, to the to the right back there is a bunch of t- uh, books and CDs. And Brother Owens may say a little more about that here momentarily. I will promise you there's a lot of good material back there. Uh, good music, good preaching, uh, books, things of that nature. Please stop and look at the table there. There's a lot of things that are helpful. And so uh, if you want to get some of that, I know he'll be willing to sell it to you. Amen. And so, but uh, we'll say a little more about uh, Brother Owens being with us. And then let me uh, just, if I can, put a little plug in for our church. We're having youth conference here February 3rd and 4th. And uh, and if, if you're a visiting church with us tonight, we'd love for you to come be a part of that. I can give you some information about that after the service, uh, but we're excited about that. And so keep those things in mind. We'll have our choir come sing for us again.
right, as the choir comes down, if you'll join us once again, please, hymn number 119, 119, as we transition here, Jesus paid it all, everyone standing that can and will, fellowship just a moment, say howdy to your neighbor, make sure you welcome the visitors tonight, 119. message in the song now as you sing I hear the Savior say on the first verse together now I hear the Savior say
so much. You can be seated. All right, we'll take an offering tonight. Everything that, come in, that comes in tonight and tomorrow night, of course, we'll go to Brother Owens. We want to be sure to take care of him. And so if you're able to give tonight, we'll give you an opportunity to do so. Brother C.J. Riddle, if you would pray for the offering, please. Oh, Jesus, Lord, come now, Lord, we thank you so much for all you do for us, Father. Lord, we thank you for giving us an extra night this week to come to your house, Father. Lord, we thank you for those who turn out, Lord. Lord, we come seeking a blessing from you tonight, Father. Lord, I, I feel you already here with us tonight, Father. I just continue, I pray that you continue to move within the service, Father. Use the man of God, Lord, to give us yes. a word that you need us to hear tonight, Father. I pray we don't turn a, a deaf ear to it, Lord. Lord, I pray that we take up this offering, Lord, to use it for upbuilding your kingdom. Bless it, Father, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a special. We're going to have our ladies trio come sing for us, and then we'll introduce Brother Owens. Uh, let me say this. If you need the nursery, it's in the building next door. Go through the, the door closest to us and go all the way to the end of the building there. The nursery is there if you need that. And uh, if you're visiting with us and you need something, uh, be sure to check with our ushers. or any, our, our folks will be glad to try to help you any way we can. All right. Our ladies are going to sing for us. Preacher preached, we heard, amen. We entered God's house without the world on our mind, concerned for souls in sin. How wonderful it seems just to recall those good old-fashioned days. Now, you may not agree, and that's fine with me, but I like the Yeah. 
is still straight. You must be born again. Christ still lives, he still reigns, and he's coming again. Christ still lives, he still reigns, and he's coming again. Well, we're glad to have Pastor Jeff Owens with us tonight. I sure love this man. I appreciate him, the pastor there, uh, Newburn, Twin Rivers Baptist Church. Uh, Brother Owens has, has preached for many, many years. I mean, uh, worked with Brother Howes and, and, of course, pastored now these many years. I was thinking, what do you say about a man who's been introduced hundreds of thousands of times probably? But I will tell you this, the one word that comes to my mind is steadfast. The Bible says be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And if I could say one thing about Brother Owens, he's just been steadfast. Uh, I, I love him. Now, he's taken his shots. He's, he's, the devil's come after him, but he's just stayed by the stuff. He's, he's, he's preached the word of God. And I, I appreciate his faithfulness and his influence in my life, and not only my life, but our church's life. Brother Owens, we love you. Thank you for coming. You come preach for us tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. I'm glad that you came to church. It would have been lonely here without you. <laughs> Brother Seacrest, thank you for allowing me to come. I, I don't take it lightly. Uh, your pulpit is precious. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Brother Carver, always glad to see you. So you have your daughter with you there to your right. Um, uh, I have to tell you, Mrs. Owens, she almost always travels with me. We have a new grandbaby. And I went to the bottom of the list just like that. And she said, you can go by yourself. I'm staying home with the baby. And so... Uh, that's exciting. We are. We have a group of people coming to your youth conference, and so they're excited about it. They're out stealing things now to get the money to get here. Well, uh, if you get a chance to come by the table, we have our newest book. It's called God's Perspective on Man's Emotions. Uh, I feel like America is emotionally out of control. And uh, I, I, if you get a chance, I think the book would help you. We wrote it for that purpose. I have to tell you, I've, got a, I've preached a lot of sermons in my time, and I probably have sermons that are more exciting and sermons that are a little more elaborate than the one that I'll preach to you tonight. But I want to help you. Uh, and and I, think, I think if you'll listen to what's said, I think this, uh, I hope, will affect you. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. I'm going to tell you the name of the sermon while you're turning. Uh, I call it, Are You Numb? Or maybe we could call it Novocaine Christians. Are You Numb? Uh, I want to talk to you about becoming spiritually numb, Amen. paralyzed. My fear is that the numb will be numb while I teach on numbness. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 8, look at verse number 11. And I'm going to inconvenience you for just a moment. Would you stand with me real quickly? And I'm going to read verse 11 through 14. The Bible says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built godly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Now Moses wrote that. Of course, he was being directed by the Holy Spirit of God. Much of the book of Deuteronomy is Moses giving counsel to the children of Israel. You say, yeah, yeah, I, I've read it before. He, he seems to say some of the th same things. Yeah, isn't it sad? <laughs> isn't it sad how many times God has to repeat himself right. to get our attention? Right. Uh, I want to talk to you about the, the, the question, are you numb? Let me pray. Father, 
I ask that you would get involved. You're obviously here already. The spirit of the people, the spirit of the pastor is good. It's healthy. The music, it was great. Now, Father, I guess then we're trying to set you up to do something great here. So, Father, speak to our hearts tonight. We look forward to year 2023. Give us energy. Give us strength. Give us fire. Make a difference in our lives and help us to make a difference in the lives of others. Holy Spirit of God, speak tonight, please, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And you can have a seat there. I looked at two or three different verses, and I seen some wording that was very interesting to me. In Matthew 13, 15, and then again in Acts 28, 27, and again in Hebrews 5, 11, it uses the terminology, someone was dull of hearing. Amen. Dull of hearing. I did a little bit of a word study on that idea of being dull of hearing. It meant that that whoever was listening, they were weighed down with other things, so their hearing was weak. Uh, Other words used to help with that word dull, it meant sluggish. It meant lazy. It meant slothful. I'm going to use the word here because uh, this is what I found in my research Dull means we become stupid in our listening. Amen. Almost like we don't care and we don't care to care. Amen. Uh, Moses, when he was writing in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he, uh, he says, forget not. Matter of fact, if you listen to the passage of Scripture I read a moment ago, he said, forget not twice. So he said, forget not. And about 25 words later, he said, forget not. I think 25 words later, he was worried that they'd forgotten already. He starts with the word beware, which means danger. You know something, folks? I I think there ought to be some uh, feeling of danger for you and I as Christians when God is forced to repeat himself. Uh, I have to tell you a story. I went to the dentist, and I needed a filling. And uh, when I went in, they, you know, I, the way I see it, they cranked my mouth open. And he, he said, okay, uh, there's going to be a little sting. Little sting. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Boy, he poked me with that needle. And uh, then they, they, they opened my mouth even further. And uh, it wasn't long. I I wasn't feeling anything much. Uh, Now, they started drilling, and I couldn't feel anything. And I don't want to be gross. I could smell it, but I couldn't feel anything. And why is it when you go to the dentist, they want to talk to you? You know, he's got my mouth cranked open, and there's, there's this little thing that he's shooting air and shooting water, and he's drilling, and he's talking to me. He's asking me questions, and I'm answering. <laughs> and here's the thing. He understood what I was saying. It, it, there's a, I didn't realize this, but maybe you should get credit in school for dental language. You know, but... He would talk to me, he understood, but I, I, was, I was numbed up. I was desensitized, uh, deadened, if you will, paralyzed. Uh, it gets pretty embarrassing. You're in there and my, uh, my, 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 uh, my glands in my mouth, they secrete a lot of slobber. I, can, I guess I qualify to be a bulldog. I mean, I, mean, I, I, could just, I just know that I'm drooling all over the place. And, and I'm, I'm always feeling for a tissue so I can wipe my mouth. And, but you know what happens, boy? They, they shoot you with that Novocaine and it numbs you up. You better be careful when you leave the dentist's office I wonder how many times I've bit my tongue, but I didn't know that I bit my tongue. Then I bite my cheek. You know what I learned? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to teach you a lot of truth tonight. I learned not to eat the candy called Bit of Honey right after you've been to the dentist. 
I like, I like the candy bit of honey, and I throw a little piece in my mouth, and the next thing you know, I'm chomping off big chunks of the inside of my cheek. <laughs> and then, then what makes that even worse? Are, are any of you familiar with what I'm describing right now? You all, you, you all been through some of this? Then what's really bad, if you bite the inside of your cheek, it doesn't take long until you bite it again. And then you got to get this conscious awareness if there's a big chunk of your cheek hanging in there and you don't want to bite it anymore. Now, you can bite yourself over and over again. And uh, really, it may not hurt really bad at that moment, but it will eventually. You know, uh, it almost seems to me that people come to church on spiritual Novocaine. Are you spiritually desensitized? Do you bite yourself in sin, not realizing what you're doing to yourself, and then rebite and rebite? Now, let me tell you, that's going to catch up to you sooner or later. When some of that Novocaine wears off and I've bit my tongue or bit my cheek, uh, I, I know that I have damaged myself. But you know that Novocaine, it dulls your senses. Are you still sensitive to the Holy Spirit in your life? Amen. Or are you and have you become numb in regard to God's purpose for your life? I think this. I think the devil shoots at Christians with arrows dipped in spiritual Novocaine and as I travel across the country it's almost as if we got doused in Novocaine for the last 24 months and we've never snapped out of it we're still numbed up and if you are watching what's happening in our media, in our government, and in our world, uh, Hollywood has been trying to, de to desensitize you, and they're trying to desensitize me. They want us to be numb. They want us to accept everything that's happening and it not affect us. Well, you know, I've got news for them. Somebody needs to throw a fit about somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what happens is we become numb. Hey, and let me warn you, the longer you've been in the church, the more apt you are to become numb. Right. You know what happens. Sometimes new Christians come in and they get all excited. Now, they're not always sure about what to get excited about, but they're at least excited. See, you're smart enough to know, well, you don't get excited about that thing, but you get excited about this. So you're smarter than some of the new Christians, but you're deader than a doornail. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're smart, but you're dead smart. Yeah. Yeah. Are you numb? Amen. Are you suffering from that Novocaine that comes, at, and I think in a special way, that's come to our country and our churches in such a time as this. Now let me break this down a little bit, if I may. Are you numb in your hearing? Your hearing. Well, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, it says this, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that you are dull of hearing. Amen. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and to become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. It talks here about being dull of hearing. What is that? Sluggish in hearing, lazy in hearing, slothful in hearing. Now, I have to tell you, I learned something when I was going to Bible college. If I was not careful and I didn't do the right thing before I went to a class, I would be very sluggish in class. This is going to sound silly, but I'm going to say it. I'd be careful eating three Big Macs right before you come to church. You say, why? Your body will be bit busy digesting food and you'll find yourself quite sluggish. And boy, are we sluggish today, dull of hearing, dull of hearing. Hey, do you understand, I believe, and it doesn't matter to who, but I happen to believe the Apostle Paul is the one that God used to write the book of Hebrews. You understand that Paul said this? He said, I have many things to say, but you're dull of hearing. 
In other words, what he said was, I've got a lot to tell you, but you're not listening. I've got a lot to tell you, but I know I don't have your attention. I've got a lot to tell you, and you don't seem to care enough to set up and pay attention. So I believe the Apostle Paul did not teach that church some things that they needed because he knew they didn't really care. Amen. They didn't care to hear. Yes. And when I talk about hearing, I'm not just talking about the use of your ears. Amen. I'm talking about the use of your ears and your heart and your consciousness. Right. You know, today, it's almost impossible to find people that understand how to concentrate. Amen. You ought to come to church and you ought to hear. You ought to be concentrating on what's being taught and preached. Amen. Not because I preach it or because he preaches it, because of whose it is. It's God's stuff. Amen. It's important. Yes. Oh, I'm telling you, people don't concentrate today. I'm pretty sure that when I was a kid, they had a thing called attention deficit, but nobody knew it. Amen. Today, everybody's got it. Amen. People are dull of hearing. Paul said, he said, uh, he said, for when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. He said, I told you once, you didn't listen to a thing that I said. Now I'm telling you again. Do you have ears to hear, but you're not hearing? Are you numb? You know, I like what he said. You know, there are people in this room, you ought to be Sunday school teachers. But you're not. And it's not because you've not been taught. It's that when you were being taught, you were not listening. You say, I hear it all, but you don't hear it to where it becomes a part of you. Amen. You know, the truth for your spiritual success is being preached from this pulpit. And I don't mean tonight. The truth that for your success, I know the two men that have pastored here over the years, they've taught what needs to be taught for you to succeed. Others have heard it, and they've, they, they've grown up, but maybe not you. Others have seen victory based on what's being preached, but not you. I beg of you, open your ears, concentrate, make yourself listen, make your mind obey. Make it obey. You ever heard someone say, uh, the lights are on, but nobody's home? I'm telling you, Brother Seacrest, I've preached, I mean, to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. And boy, it's sad. And, I, and, I, and I'm not mad. I'm brokenhearted because so many places I go to preach, I look out and people are staring at you like they're in a coma. And I'm wondering, what are we doing? Why are we here? Either this is God's word and either this is God's church or it's all a big joke. Let's stay home. But if this is real and this really is God's work and it really is God's book, we ought to set up. We ought to sit on the edge of our seat. We ought to be hungry. We ought to, we ought to have a passion to learn it and pull in the truth. Parents, you know how it feels. You ask yourself, are the kids listening to anything I say? My father was not very good at repeating himself. My brother and I learned, you better lock in on what dad says. If you don't, he'll lock in on you. You know, parents, every parent in here knows exactly what I'm saying. You go to teach, you go to instruct, and you feel like, are they listening to a thing that's being said? Now, I can't speak for your pastor, but I can tell you this. Many a pastor feels the very same way as he stands in his pulpit and teaches and preaches the Word of God. Parent, that same feeling of, are they listening at all? Didn't you hear what I said? Are we numb in our hearing? So, secondly, may I ask, are you numb about what you've been taught? What you've been taught? Listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse number 9 
uh, it says, only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, unless they depart from thine heart all the days of thy life. He said, take heed to yourself. Take heed to yourself, lest you forget the things which you have seen. So it wasn't just that they weren't hearing. They're not watching. Uh, one of the reasons why we need to remember what's taught is that we're responsible to pass it on. You know, some of you have been in church basically all your life. Can we tell? Are you numb to what you've been taught? You know, there are people in here, you've been reared in excellent Christian homes. But it does not show. Some here, you've graduated from an excellent Christian school. But you're paralyzed. You are spiritually paralyzed. You're virtually barely treading water in your Christian life. There are people under the sound of my voice who have graduated from Bible colleges. So what? And God's getting nothing out of it. Hey, could I warn you? Second generation Christian who's on spiritual Novocaine, nothing affects you. You've heard it all. You've seen it all. You've been around it all. And you just glare out into space, wondering what it's all about. You know what's happened? The devil shot you with that Novocaine, and you are numb to the reality of God and numb to the power of God and numb to the Word of God. And that's a very dangerous place to be. Are you numb about what you've been taught? Do you know that now I think there are probably some younger Christians in here. You please excuse me for a moment. I might not be exactly talking to you with what I'm about to say. But most of you have been trained far beyond your desire to perform. Amen. You know better. You've been taught better. So well, what do you think we ought to do, Brother Owens? Live it. Live what you've been taught. Someone said to me, I don't think this is the time of revival. I said, I agree in your life. Because it's a time of revival in anybody's life that wants there to be revival. Are you numb? Are you numb in your hearing? Are you numb in what you've been taught? I even believe that we've become, and thirdly, we've become numb about his name. You know, the name of Jesus is still very, very important. Deuteronomy 6, 12, it says, Then beware lest thou forget the Lord. Have you become numb about the name Jesus? When you hear someone use the word God, does it still mean something to you? Has it become so common that it is no longer a precious name? When I was a kid, even lost people were careful not to misuse the name of Jesus. They, everybody would talk about, oh, you should not use God's name in vain. Today, it's commonplace. Folks, I think it's still supposed to bother us when people use God's name in vain. I think it's still supposed to, it's supposed to uh, make us feel something when we hear them. Hey, do you know they want to use God's name as a cuss word? You used to thrill when you would sing, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. You used to thrill. You'd hear someone sing, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I've got him on my mind. That meant something to you. Yep. Now, you can have people come into church and you're singing a song that's all about Jesus and they're just standing there staring at you. Yeah. Amen. Like they don't care. Yeah. Amen. When people call you a Christian, you ought to understand something. That's supposed to be an honor. Amen. Hey, I don't think the name of Jesus, I don't think the name of God, I don't think the name Jehovah should become commonplace. Amen. 
I think it's still a holy name. I still think it's an exalted name. I still think it's a name above every name. But boy, everywhere you go, it's almost like, oh, Jesus, oh, huh? yeah, sure. Have we become numb? Have we been shot with some sort of Novocaine that has desensitized us to the reality of Jesus is God's son? But not only that, have you become numb about your soul winning or your service to God? Are you numb? Revelation chapter 2 verse number 4 it says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Left? Thy first love. Someone had become numb to the things of God that they used to love. Yes. They had become numb about that which they used to be passionate. They had lost their feeling about the importance of winning the souls of men. They used to love it. You know, some of you, you used to thrill. The preacher would get done preaching and he would give an invitation and the pianist would play just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me and somebody would get up and they'd start walking down the aisle and a soul winner would go over and kneel with them and you just knew they were getting saved and you were over there you were tapping your wife saying look at that look at that look at that they're getting saved now you're asleep during the altar call you're thinking about being the first one to get to McDonald's what's happened you become numb What's happened? You become desensitized. Are you a paralyzed soul winner? Is your tongue on the devil's novocaine and unable to move? Are you desensitized about the, the, the fact that people need your help? I was so proud of a couple of my men. Yesterday on Sunday morning, I was working my way toward the, uh, the, the auditorium. It was just a couple of minutes before church to begin. When I was walking through, our last bus route had arrived and had delivered a bunch of precious cargo. There was a little boy that came through. His pants that were long were about five inches above his shoes. The boy was about six. The size child's shoe that he would have wore would have been about an eight or a nine maybe and a child's shoe. The shoes that he had on had no shoe strings. The shoes had to have been about an 11 or a 12 in a men's shoe. When he was walking, he was pushing his feet forward, trying to keep the shoes from coming off so he didn't embarrass himself because it would drive his feet toward the, the front of the shoe. Two of my men were standing there, and one said... That boy's going to get some shoes. Another man said, we might as well just get him a whole suit. And I watched those two men analyze that bus child. I watched him talk about putting shoes on his feet and clothes on his back. I watched him talk about, one of them said, let's get together. I'll, I'll find out from the bus captain where he lives. We're probably going to need to do something for all the kids in that family or somebody will be hurt. My heart thrilled. And then the invitation was given about an hour after that conversation. And here come that little boy. He came down. They took a Bible Want him to Christ. Those two men were back there. I thought they were going to come unglued. Amen. I was wondering. Anybody come to your church that needed shoes this year, this this Sunday? No. Well, you don't know, do you? I'm sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt you. You had yours, right? Amen. You know. Are we desensitized? Yes. Amen. Have we lost track of what it's really all about? Are we more interested in getting out of here on Sunday instead of watching people walk the aisle? Are we hoping nobody gets baptized? Because it, it elongates the service. Hey, what's happened to your service to God? What's happened? The... Uh, you have vans, you have buses. If you run them, let me ask you something, bus worker, bus captain, or those of you that run the vans. Uh, are you numb about your bus route? 
numb bus routes die. Yeah. Amen. Let me ask you something, Sunday school teacher. Are you a numb teacher? Are you just going through the motions? Are you just trying to transfer a little information real quick to get it over with? Or are you trying to change the lives of your students? But we've become, we would become numb. Do we even care? Choir, thank you. I like it that you attack your song. Don't ever lose that. I go places and they'll stand up in the choir or sing about the fire of God. And I'm wondering, they have no concept of what they're talking about. I'm not even sure they care. There's no fire. There's no zip. There's no electricity. Well, I've got news for you. In the service of God, there's energy. We're not, we're not to be numb. Usher, put your heart into what you do. Whatever area of service you have in the church, hey, some of you, you want to have a good 2023? Come out of your coma. Amen. 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 Yes. Realize you, you're desensitized. You've been shot with the devil's Novocaine. You're numb. You're paralyzed. Hey, are you numb about your sin? Oh, come on. Amen. Your sin? Hebrews 3.13 says, But exhort one another daily, whether it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Hardened. You know what that means? Not responsive. Obstinate. Numb. Paralyzed. Let me see, see if I can explain. Does your sin no longer bother you? You remember when the preacher used to stand up here and and he would preach against the pornography. He would preach against that junk on the internet called pornography. You remember back when it bothered you? You remember back when you felt bad about it? You remember back when you said, I've got to stop it. I've got to stop it. I've got to stop it. But you know what happened? You went back to it. And you know what? Same man preaching the same thing, but it don't bother you anymore. Some of you, you used to feel bad when you did not tithe. Matter of fact, you were scared to death not to. Now you ignore it, doesn't matter to you a lick. You are no longer sensitive to that at all. You have justified that completely out of your life. Right. And you're paralyzed. Desensitized. You've been shot with spiritual Novocaine. Boy, I've watched this happen. There's sin in our life. We don't take care of it. And before long, we become hardened. And we no longer feel a conviction. We no longer feel that that, that there's something wrong with that sin. It happens with adultery. I hope there's no one under the sound of my voice that is guilty of adultery. But just so you know, even though there seems to be a new twist of morality in our day and age, adultery is still a sin out of hell. It is still wrong. But you know what happens? You, you, most people, if they commit adultery, they feel bad at some point. But then they just keep it up, and before long, it's okay. It's okay. But people don't understand my circumstances. People don't understand how mean my husband is or how mean my wife is. That's why I'm committing adultery. We're not bothered. Right. Oh, Same thing's true about stealing and gossip and wrong friends and immodesty and the liquor. Amen. Huh. Missing church. Amen. <laughs> Let me tell you, there were people that respected the church house and wanted to be in church every time the doors were open right. pre-COVID. And there are people everywhere that have never gotten their rhythm back. I'm almost finished. Are you numb? I would like to recommend to all of us that we get our feeling back. Brother Secrets, I'll tell you something about me. I don't, know, I don't know that I've ever said this. I said over there right before the service. And I was tired. 
I preach a lot. I travel a lot. I've been doing it since I was a 16-year-old boy. I say something to myself just before I come to the pulpit every time. I say, God, please, these people deserve my best. Please. I, I can't give them leftovers. I have to have energy. I, I, I have to have help. I cannot do this without you. You, you, you know something? Uh, there's a, some of you, 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 you've preached before, and it, it's fun. It, it's exciting. Can I tell you something? After you've preached 40,000 sermons, if you're not careful, you can become numb. Oh, amen. See, it's what I do. And I would rather God take me to heaven than for me to do it out of rote memorization. Are you numb? Listen, Malachi 3, 7 says, Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, have not kept them. Return unto me. Some of you need to return from your paralyzation, from that numbness, from that Novocaine. You need to reignite your Christian life. Return to God. Come to your senses. Uh, I forget uh, which cologne it used to be. There was a cologne that when, when I was a kid, they'd have commercials on it and they'd slap them. Was it? Uh, I forget which one it was. Anybody know? I th- maybe it might have been Brood or I don't know which one it was. But boy, you know what some of us need to do? Amen. Wake yourself up. Re-energize. Don't be numb. Uh, I have a sermon that I preach. It's called Shake It Off. Some of you just, you've become lax. Shake it off. Shake it off and step up. Uh, Hey, decide to rekindle the fire in your Sunday school class. And decide to rekindle the fire in your ministry. Uh, Revive yourself. Now, you probably won't do that unless you see the real you. Now, I want to recommend that you don't bite your tongue or the inside of your cheek while you're numb. It's going to hurt bad later. Uh, Some of you are bleeding. Be careful now. Don't allow yourself to self-destruct. I'm done. But let me end by doing this. Are you so far gone that you're numb to an entire sermon about being numb? Amen. God has not really affected you in the last 35 minutes, has he? You just want to get out of here. You're not going to make any decisions. I'm not going to change you. Are you so spiritually desensitized that a sermon like this will do nothing at all for you? You feel nothing? In most cases, Brother Seacrest, a sermon like this works on people. Amen. Yes, sir. You say, Brother Owens, you're making me mad. Good, that means there's life. Praise the Lord. (laughs) But listen, let me warn you. And honestly, you might not believe this, but I love you and I'm your friend. Let me warn you. If you can go through a sermon like this and not be bothered at all, I'm a little scared for you. That that, that could be a dangerous sign. Amen. We all need to be bothered. I love what is said in Deuteronomy 8, 11 through 14. Twice Moses said, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't become numb to what God's given us. Dull of hearing. What does it mean? 
stupid in our listening. I don't think we ought to be like that. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here tonight and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I want to recommend to you that you get saved. If you're not saved, if, if you'll come, we can have someone take the Bible and show you how to be born again. Just like that little boy that was scooting those oversized shoes so he could walk. He got saved. And if you're not saved, you can get saved tonight. Let me ask, is there anybody here that would say, Brother Owens, I'm not born again. If I were to die tonight, I don't know for a fact I'd go to heaven. Please pray for me. I'm not saved. If you'll raise your hand, I'll pray for you. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to try to embarrass you at all. Okay, then let me move on, Christian. Is there any area of your life where you become numb and you need to get it cared for? Has God possibly pointed out a numb area in your life? And you say, God has pointed out an area where I'm, I'm numb and, and I want to take care of it. Would you let God see your hand? Oh, yeah, hands up everywhere. God pointed out an area where you're a bit numb and you're going to take care of it. God bless you. You can put those hands down. We're going to have an altar call. Oh, hey, let me ask you this. Are you numb to the use of the altar? You used to use it. But it doesn't matter what anybody says. You don't need it. Think about that. I'm going to ask the pianist to begin to play. Let's stand to our feet with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. If you need the altar, you come. How about it, Christian? Are you numb? Has the devil shot you with the Novocaine and you're paralyzed? Your Sunday school class is paralyzed. Your bus route is paralyzed. Your soul winning is paralyzed. Your marriage is paralyzed. Huh. That sermon right there could change our whole year. I got saved when I was young. I've literally been in church my whole life. I literally, I don't remember ever not being in church. I started preaching when I was 17 years of age. I'll be 43 this year. I've been on staff at this church for, oh, 20 years now, I guess. 
can I tell you? Can I speak from experience? It's easy to get numb. I try to encourage our soul winners often. We, we know it's a command. We know God told us to do it, but let's not, let's, let's look at it beyond that. Let's, let's go out and do it because not only God wants us to and tells us to, but we have the fire and the desire to do it. Brother Owen's just phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I uh, decided to do it this year. I, I called Brother Owens. I said, I would like for you to come kind of kick off our year for us. I wanted him to be with us the very first week of 2023. Couldn't, couldn't be that way. He said, I'll, I'll give you the second week. This is a sermon right here I think that we probably all need to go back and listen to from time to time and say, let's not be numb. Let's not be numb. Oh, wow. I mean, just phenomenal. Such, such convicting preaching. I'll say this. If your heart was not stirred in some form or fashion tonight, I'm with Brother Owens. I'm very, very concerned about you. I think we all have to hit the restart button, hit the refresh button and say, all right, uh, we, we've got to get with it. Let's not just follow it. Let's just not go through the motions again. Let's get, let's get our heart back into it. Have you ever seen somebody do something when their heart wasn't in it? I've seen through the years, I've played sports all my life, but I see, I see parents make their kids play sports. And the kids didn't want to do it. And when they got out on the floor, it was obvious. They didn't want to be there. They didn't, they didn't want anything to do with it, but their parents said, you're going to do it. You know, God saved us. Folks, we're going to heaven someday. We belong to the king. We are servants of God. I don't want God to look down and say, yeah, his heart's not in it. Oh, her heart's not in it. You often hear me say it's more than just having a position. People think, oh, if you have a position, boy, you're going to... Uh, can I tell you, the shine wears off of everything. Amen. That's when you have to get your heart into it. Say, so, hey, we're going to do it. I, I love what Brother Mark says. I, I've, heard him, I'm, I've heard him say it hundreds of times. He'll, he'll say to the choir, uh, now, now, act like you enjoy being here. Happy faces, happy hearts. Let's be excited about serving the King of Kings. Amen. Well, Brother Owens, I sure appreciate you preaching tonight. Thank you. Boy, my heart has been stirred. I hope yours has. Boy, what, what phenomenal truth. Well, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, we'll be back for the evening service. And uh, please invite somebody. Uh, be back in your place tomorrow night. Choir, of course, we'll sing again. We'll have special music. And... Uh, I, I, listen, I know everybody worked today and, and, and you're tired. I could see it on some of your faces. You're, you're weary. Can I, can I thank you for your faithfulness to God's house tonight? Thank you for coming. And thank you for, for being in your place, even when, you're, when your flesh is tired and weary. And, uh, and I, I'm excited about tomorrow night. You be in your place. Be careful as you go home. And uh, we're going to pray and be dismissed in prayer. And uh, I'm, I'm going to ask Brother Roger Blankenship to come. Brother Roger, you're going to pray and dismiss us in prayer as brother roger is coming let me encourage you to stop back there at the at the book table there's cds and different things take time to look at that of course let brother uh, owens know you're glad that he came tonight brother roger would you pray for us please bow your heads let's pray please dear heavenly father let us thank you for the great truth that we've heard tonight dear gracious father let it touch each and every heart that's here tonight the lord help us lord to to not grow numb. Lord, help us to be on fire for Thee. Dear gracious God, we've got too much to gain. And dear gracious Father, help us to be more like Thee. Dear gracious Father, we thank You for the truth. Help it find lodging in the hearts of Your people and help us to grow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>